And that's it, man. This is official now we're doing this? It's, hey, all right. It's recording, so <laughs> before we record, a little trick that I learned. You got to do, you know how like in the movies, they have the fucking clip thing? Yeah, we're going to do that. Well, they do that so they can sync the fucking audio with the video. So they get rid of all the audio from the fucking cameras, and they'll look for that. And that's the moment. They'll look for the spot, that way um, it's easy to fucking sync it in. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that literally <coughs> yesterday. <laughs> but, um, dude, uh, I didn't drink IPAs at all when I first met you. No, you didn't. You drank strictly Heineken. That's all you drank. Yeah, I switched your, to your thing was the twenty-two ounce bottles of Heineken. That was your, that was your ish. I switched to Amber for like, I think right after Heineken, but uh, I think Brian got me into Amber, which is weird because he doesn't drink that shit at all now. <laughs> but uh, this is probably my favorite fucking beer, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, yeah. Uh, as far as local is, it, this is definitely the best. This is uh, by far. So we just started uh, our podcast, each episode with a fucking... King Street. King Street, and then we can switch to a different one. I mean, you always surprise me with the IPAs you bring to the studio. <laughs> sometimes they're kind of shitty. Uh, sometimes you find gems, sometimes you find garbage. It is what it is. But not as shitty as uh, the beers that Brian brings in here. <laughs> It tastes like pine cone took a shit in a can. Where it's like the both of us just like, dude, these are terrible. He's like, oh, no, man, they're good. I'm like, you're you trying to convince me? I'm telling you they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you try to play some Jedi mind on me or some shit. Well, and I know that uh, when I bring in anything that's bullshit, I'm going to be the first one to admit. Like, I'll try it and be like, yeah. yeah, man, it's not very good. But, you know, you want one, you can have one. Right. I really, I really only drink like a beer or two at practice. I get like the week, like Brian does, to right. build up. You know. <laughs> That's fun. Get the uh, get your microphone closer to to your face. How's this? Oh my god! I get all sultry. You got the voice of a <laughs> god. <laughs> Too bad I don't have the body of a god. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but what I lack in personal, uh, what I lack in looks, I make up in personality and charisma. That's true. I never understood uh, how you had that many friends when I first met you. <laughs> like uh, uh, once we became friends, everywhere we went, I tried to introduce you to someone. You're like, oh yeah, I know Ryan. It's like, how do you know? <laughs> Everybody fucking knows you. That's why I don't even bother anymore. <laughs> if you're gonna introduce me to somebody, unless they're from like another country, most likely I know them if they're right. from here. Yeah, that's uh, that was the thing when I first moved here to the United States. The very frustrating. Like a lot of people, like go to the same school and they go to the same school for like all four right, years. Right, right. And previous to that, they'll go to fucking middle school. So like, they always have all these conversations about like, oh man, remember when fucking Jake brought it out and whatever, <laughs> bro? And you're like, what? Like, <laughs> oh, it was like back in third grade. We're like fucking juniors in high school. Right, like, You're like, how am I supposed to relate to that shit, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's one of the fucking frustrating things when you first move to fucking a different country. Like, just start kind of like when we moved to Pennsylvania. Like, oh, dude, that sucked. Going from like everybody knows you like a coots at the avenue. Where you're, where you're basically VIP. You're basically VIP. Dude, do you remember we didn't have to get, we never got carded. We never had to stand in any lines. Like we, we yeah, dude, we got away with tons of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I got kicked out well, a few times, but, <laughs> but once at the Avenue, once at Coots, but the one at Coots, man. <laughs> the bouncer was like, you know you have to go. I'm like, I know, man. Yeah, yeah I do. I, was, I gotta go. Like, I gotta go. <laughs> I, would, I know I was I was trying to start a fight, and I had, like, no room because, like, you know, I got, like, no muscles. <laughs> I was fucking I was fucking with this group of, like, fucking uh, bros. I was like, what's up, bro? And then we run into them at the dentist later that night. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the bros from fucking earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. 
But uh, anyways, dude. So when I fucking met you, you were a guitar player. I I thought I was a guitar player. I, let's let's put it this way: I can play the guitar, but I am not a guitarist. You did think that? <laughs> no, I did. I totally did. And well, it's weird how it's weird how fate works and where it aims us and how. Um, there for a while, we even we even separated, not as friends, like because like you said, on our trip out to hang out together for the first time, it was one hundred percent obvious that we were going to be friends. Uh, but there was, there was that time where I was I was kind of like doing my thing with Brandon, and you were kind of uh, doing your own thing, rekindling with your band, and. Uh, but at that point, we we're already like pretty pretty decent friends. I mean, like when I met you. I was still playing in Murder's Justice, which is my first band with Brian. Yes. And uh, I mean, it was, it was like either I was on my way out or the vocalist had to leave. Cause Some, someone wasn't. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yes. Someone was getting an exit. Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> by the by the way, Dennis Reed, we absolutely, absolutely love, love you, dude. We do. We absolutely love you. Dude, I had this like hate relationship with Dennis, man. It's like I had so much admiration and at the same time so much fucking disdain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I I admire so many things about that guy and at the same time I just hated so many other things. But uh I just fucking what what I did admire of him was just his passion for music. He oh yeah, this definitely. To this fucking day, so shout out to Dennis. <laughs> uh, I will say that uh, I always thought Dennis was cool. The only issue I had with him is that I was compared to him for like the first six, seven years we were a band. What? <laughs> no, no, you weren't. Yeah, dude, Nobody compared yeah, no, you to Dennis. I was. I was the frontmanship. I was on top. Why mm. frontman like Dennis? Dennis was the best. Front okay, man even ever. I give you. Even I give yeah, you. Shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean even you? It was Sorry, 90% bro. You. <laughs> it was not ninety percent me. I would compare you to or I was trying to get you to be like Jason from fucking Turban North or or at least like Phil and Selma. Which it isn't too much to ask, I don't think. <laughs> Can you just be like fucking Phil and Selma? Be somebody else, god <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, but yeah, when I when I met you I was because that was the situation, I was kind of shopping for a side project or maybe exit into another band altogether. Yeah, yeah it was uh, it was Davo, Davo, the Theory of Hate, right? Who uh, aligned us and was like, "Yo, you yeah, guys should." Yeah, yeah, right. It was between him and uh, no, yeah, it was him. Yeah, yeah it was it was Davo. That's right, because I was talking to him and um, you know, I mean, they've been in a band with Dennis, so they kind of knew what I was going through. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, once one more time, you know, Dennis, we love you. I know we this. Love you. I know this is probably gonna sound like I just I just started a podcast to come back and fucking bash Dennis. Dennis. It totally, <laughs> it's totally not like that, not like that, because I love that guy, and um, I used to love hate him. Now I just fucking absolutely fucking love him. So, anyways, <laughs> love you, Dennis. <laughs> uh, yeah, he pointed me to a guy that he knew that played the drums, and he was starting a band, and he was like, "Well, yeah, no, this guy, they, uh, not they, fucking." Drunk Steve. Oh. <laughs> oh, good old Drunk Steve. <laughs> drunk Steve. Uh, he so he introduced me to him at one of their shows, one of the theory of hate shows, and uh, uh, he told me that you know that I had to meet you and this and that. And long short story, I met you at one of the theory of hate shows, and uh, so I showed up. You know, I talked to Steve outside, and he was like, "Oh, you know, the guy Ryan, he's inside. Uh, let's go talk to him." And uh, we go inside. This was at the Paddle Boat Cafe. Mm -hmm. And there was fucking nobody there. But there was this big guy in front of the stage just circle banging to Theory of Hate. Like, you were like their <laughs> only fucking fan. Yeah. And just yeah. having the fucking time of your life. Hilarious. But I was like, like from the back, I was like, cool, man. He's got long hair. Because <laughs> like, I was in a band with Adam and he was already losing his hair. Right. And, uh, yeah, fucking. <laughs> Anyways, long short story. We jammed the next day. It didn't work out, but I remember I told you like straight up, like, yeah, man, this isn't this gonna is work gonna out. Work. But yeah. I totally want to fucking hang out with you again. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where it took off. And then, you know, I continued with Murder Murder's Justice oh, yeah. for like two oh, yeah. 
two other months and on those two months is when I like I hook you up with Brandon Morrow uh you know if we, ex drummer from doing, City and Ashes see, have and, you seen recently he's doing some really amazing things the new track that his band um shout out for Brandon Morrow uh his band to crown the air their newest track is really sick if you haven't yeah? heard it I'll no, have to send it to you but I haven't listened to it yeah. yet Brandon Morrow is a very fantastic drummer who is no longer yeah. in our scene but uh yeah, for a period of time, I was jamming with him and um, uh, Tim. I can't remember Tim's last Tim? name. Uh, Tim who? He he also plays drums. I can't remember his last name. Is it from uh, from Giants Make Way? Yes, yes, that Tim. Well, yeah, that motherfucker was supposed to record us, but <laughs> I guess he, I guess he fucking quit music or whatever. So. Well, I should have known the first time after practicing with him and Brandon like four times that then. He basically was like, more or less, he told Brandon that I sucked and he didn't want to play music with me. <laughs> he That's told it. Brandon? Yeah, he told Brandon. Tim told Brandon. Tim oh. told Brandon that I sucked and he didn't want to play music with me anymore. So I should have taken that as a sign um, that maybe I shouldn't play guitar. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of fucked up. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I in, mean, in retrospect, you know. I mean, I mean, I guess I told you you saw kind of like in your face, but I wasn't. You you were a little more cordial about it, and he he basically said it in those words behind my dude, back. I was like, <laughs> no, I wasn't good. Like, like dude, uh, when I reiterate my story of how I found um, my way into Decepticide, I always, dude, I tell it the same way every time. You can ask anybody. I always tell them, I was like, well, I met Enzo, and I thought I could play the guitar until I met Enzo and Adam, and I realized I could not play the guitar. Hmm. Did it turn? Am I not? Uh, yeah, I think you're... How about, yeah? No? Yes? It seems like his recording is super low. I mean, it's I picking that. me you, up. You sound a lot clearer than I do. That's where you sound a lot clearer to me on my headset. See, and you sound a lot clearer to me on my headset. Mm. Uh, let's see. Oh, crap. Oh, God damn it. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. It's like a baby getting a hearing aid and hearing his mom's voice for the first time. I wonder if re it recorded any of that for you. It's probably fucking not. I love you. No, it, sh it should have. No, fuck, dude. Maybe not. Well, we had this, though. How could it not record it if it's on there? You know what I'm saying? It's 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 Because the instrument wasn't turned on. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's pause this. Yeah, yeah. let's go ahead and pause, and you can double check. All right. Fuck, he pick it up from here. Okay, sorry. Okay. All of you are experiencing with us for the first time, too. We've never done this before, and we're kind of... Oh, wow, you're super loud. That's so weird. Sorry, how about back here? Is that no, better? I mean, you're fine, because... Like, uh, it sounds okay. It was just peaking a little bit. Yeah, anyways, that's good. One of the one of the reasons why you worked to ninja me in your band was because I was loud as fuck. I did ninja... I, I invite you to come to practice, but... Uh, I didn't understand why you're bringing a guitar. Because you didn't tell me why you brought me to practice. You just told me to come to practice. And the last time we jammed together, I had a guitar. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. I can. I think I can edit all this up. But actually, um, let me listen to this. Say something. Enzo. Oh, my God. Say more than that. <laughs> Enzo, I wish that we had met earlier in our lives and we could have... Moved out of state a lot Dude, sooner and could done. you imagine if we would have met when I first met Brian? I mean, we could, like, if you would have been in Murder's Justice? Bruh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we would have been midge forever. <laughs> then we would have been celebrating our 15th year anniversary. Right, right. And not our 12th. Well, because Murder's Justice lasted like two, two years and a half. It failed like 10, though. <laughs> Towards the end, it felt like it's that. like getting trapped in a marriage. You know? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, anyways, I don't want Dennis to think that I'm just fucking. It. <laughs> but if, if we're just talking from beginning of uh, beginning of times and shit, it's 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 part of it, man. It's whatever. Cheers, man. Cheers. I'm just gonna go ahead and fucking leave. All these mistakes. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. Right, this is the first one. They can they can experience it with us. Yeah, we'll get better. 
By the way, we don't even know if this camera is fucking still Yeah, we working. don't actually know if these are working or not, so we, we hope they are. If they're not, I mean, I guess we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out during editing process. <laughs> I can't believe how weird I sound in my own head, dude. Like, this is how other people hear me when I talk into the mic. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I, that, this now, you, now you see how I feel. <laughs> not even that. It's just in public. It's like well, when we were at the bank the other day. And you were telling me about your fucking knee and shit. He's like, yeah, man, I dropped my f that safe on my fucking knee and this and that. But you were like, fucking this and fucking that. <laughs> and I'm like, at the fucking bank. I'm like, okay, dude, relax, man. <laughs> fucking, we're not at a concert. <laughs> hey, hey, you're right. You're right. Nah, you're right. You're, you're right. right. You're right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, but um, but so how do you how do you start playing guitar? Uh, my dad. No. Um, the fuck gave you that idea? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am like third or fourth generation musician on my dad's side. And um, I basically, between the summer of 10th, I mean, uh, ninth and 10th grade, I got uh, hit by a truck, blew out my knee, and I was in a cast for months. And it was then, while I was in a cast, I couldn't go out and play, basically, quote unquote, play. Couldn't go out and like ride my bike and like meet my friends and all that. I started playing my uh, dad's guitar that he had left me, and uh, basically I just you know strummed stuff that I thought felt okay. And uh, then I ended up buying a guitar and amp from uh, my cousin Jack. He sold me a Washburn Lion guitar and a pig nose amp that was like this big. And, what and was it? What was the brand of that guitar that you were playing when Washburn. I first Washburn. It was a yeah, Washburn. Yeah, Washburn. Oh, oh, the one no, you was, met me with. Yeah. It was an AXL. I don't even know if that company exists anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I liked. I liked the guitar. Uh, granted, um, yeah, it's, it's gone now. But, <laughs> 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 but yeah, I bought a, a guitar and an amp off my cousin Jack, and then just started. I don't want to say self-taught because I didn't get very far with it, but. I basically just sat at home all the time and just kind of played what I thought sounded good, you know? Like, I can't read music. I can't, I can't, yeah. I don't know what notes are what. I can't play chords, you nah, know? That's, a, I, that's all right, man. I learned how to read music and it did jack shit for me, man. <laughs> right. Went to fucking UA for, like, uh, private lessons in guitar core theory. And, uh, yeah, you learn, like, classical shit and it's cool and it's impressive for some people, but... Be, being a metal guitarist now for the past 15 years, you didn't use any of it, did you? Not a single I thing. I don't think I've, I've written, like, <laughs> a classical, like, clean part, even for a fucking part of a song or, like... Can't even recall. No, like, and even, like, the, the clean parts <laughs> that I have on, on our fucking songs are super basic, just, like, power chords. I'm well, just, that's because your clean parts, you're more just kind of pausing and building up to, you know... Getting down and dirty. But You're even, not doing it to, to... Even then, like, I could be using some more integrated fucking chords and uh, make it super, uh, you know, more interesting or whatever, but uh, I'm just not that good, man. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's just that... Hey, man, if there's one if there's one thing that bands, like, going to quote our best here, uh, is that Dimebag Daryl from Pantera proved that it doesn't have to be super crazy technical in order to really reach somebody and sound amazing. It's true, but it doesn't mean that I don't envy those little fucks uh, that uh, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> can I know. fucking shred and they're like half <laughs> my fucking age. Yeah. And, uh, it's not even that. It's not even an age thing. Like, I feel like I gather all my skills up to when I was maybe 23, 24, basically right before my daughter was born. <laughs> and then like right when my daughter was born and I moved back to Alaska, I don't think I was ever back on the train of like sitting down and try to improve i'll sit down and write stuff and i'll learn cover songs because it's just fun but as far as like you're not learning new techniques no new, like uh, i'm not i'm not gonna put down the metronome and, and try to fucking get better at sweep picking or tremble picking or like try to fucking like learn more theory like none of it like i just pretty much been working with the same skills since i'm 24 and of course, you get better because you keep as you if you keep playing, yeah, yeah. you're gonna get better. Muscle something. memory, but yeah. I think what I got better in the past years, in the past nine years since my daughter was born, is probably like my timing and like my writing, especially um, not having a second guitar player anymore. 
um, just writing things to where they're heavy enough for one guitar. Because before I used to think everything in harmony is like, oh, if I play this riff, like all the single notes, you know, the other guitar player would play this or that. And I used to write like that. I used to think like that all the time. But it took me a while to like get away from that just because I was done looking for second guitar players. Yeah, that ship sailed. Because <laughs> they're a bunch of bitches. <laughs> See, you know, and I'm on, I'm on the opposite side of the store, uh, uh, score than you are. I, I believe that um, I didn't truly start gaining what I really enjoy about my voice till about two or three years ago. Like, um, I, I, I really, really like... Two, three years ago? Yeah, I'd say, really? I'd say um, where I'm at now as far as my voice, like in the past two or three years, I've been able to develop um, lows that I never had before. You know what I'm saying? I've been yeah, able that's to, true, that's true. I've been able to do things that all of the previous 10 years I wasn't really able to do all that well. Because remember, when we first started out, all it was was highs and mids. I couldn't even do lows. Yeah. I mean, your mids have always been, like, the best in the fucking game, dude. Well, I, I can mid my ass off. But I, <laughs> could, I couldn't low for shit, dude. And now I've gotten to this point where now I've got highs, mediums, and lows in my arsenal. And all I'm doing now is I'm working on building my lows volume up and right. the ability to carry them longer and louder. Because uh, that's the one thing the lows started off. I could do them, but they were super quiet. I couldn't do them with projection like I can with my highs and my mids. And now I'm finally reaching the point where I can kind of project lows. Right. So were, were you actually in a band with Carl? <laughs> <laughs> shout out uh, to Carl Blocker. Carl Blocker, hey, number one. That's the number one Deceptive fan currently. Y'all can try to take his crown. Oh, I want. don't know, man. Wheezy. Oh, the Wheeze. <laughs> you know, Chris is. Wheezy, we also love you. If shout out to he's you. He's not a close second. You know what, Wheezy, you're number one for me. <laughs> number one <laughs> in the Deceptive fan club. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be hard to base which one of them has been in more of our Fuck piss or seen fan more club. of our shows. Deceptive family, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I don't think you could call us a band because we never played shows or had like full lineup or anything. But um, him and I just used to go to his house and play guitars and jam and uh, had high aspirations right. to start things that never happened. Huh. We even had it, dude. We had a friend draw us an album cover, and we had a na <laughs> we had a name and everything, and we uh, didn't even have like two I or three full like full songs written. But we had all these plans. It's like, okay, now all we got to do is write the music, <laughs> and well, then we'll have a band, bro. Well, I did have some songs written down, and you know, kind of form when uh, I was playing with this kid back in high school. But like again, like we didn't have a bass player or a drummer. And nothing. It was just the two of us making that fucking bullshit songs, and we'd be fucking writing and shit. And be like, oh, these are the lyrics, and this is the name of our band. And we'd do like a photo shoot in my in my room. What was uh? What was the first <sighs> name? Okay. What was the first name of your first your first band? I'll tell you if you tell me. Go ahead. The fr well, it's a two word. Do you want the whole word? No, give it to me. Let me hear it. What is it? <laughs> dirt poor. Cause we were dirt poor. We weren't even that fucking poor. I mean. I live with my parents. They had a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't actually, even... I'm a suburban kid. Got me. <laughs> you know what? He was kind of poor, actually. <laughs> no, he was actually all right, but I don't know, kind of a, he was kind of a hoarder. So, you know, his time... house was kind of full. Yeah, kind of full of shit, man. So it's actually not really that poor. You actually have a lot of things. <laughs> but dirt, <laughs> lots of dirt. Very dirty. Um, yeah. Me and uh, me and Carl's project band's name was torture chamber that's pretty sick <laughs> <laughs> i like it we had a guy named kevin who drew us up this dope ass picture oh, where basically it was like fuck dude we gotta steal that for one of our songs that don't have a fucking title i'm down i'm down <laughs> we got we got a couple of those <laughs> yeah because god forbid we ask brian for a fucking uh name name, name for a song old man's hat <laughs> It's the old man's hat. God damn it, Brian. God damn it, Brian. Oh, God damn it, Brian. God, I love the kid. Dude, that God is damn the Brian. most amazing love. It's like, I love you so much, I want to punch you in the, the face, face quite often. <laughs> with well, love. 
Well, it's like you said to me before. It's like the three of us have talked about. You can't really consider yourself best friends if you haven't been in at least a couple fist fights before. A few. Yeah, Brian almost shook me out when uh, <laughs> when I was like 19 or 20 when I first met him uh, on the first year of a band. I think we just we uh, play a battle of the bands and we fucking won. So we got back to my girlfriend's house. Just got fucked up. Got <laughs> fucked up. And then my girlfriend's brother was blacked out drunk and he kind of pinned me down and he was like fuck we were kind of like wrestling and he like grabbed me by my fucking collar and i was wearing this fucking necklace that my brother had given me and uh he he bought it for me from iraq when he was deployed in iraq and i remember fucking telling him it was like said i'm i'm listening dude i'm just fucking telling you if you fucking break this i'll fucking break you dude and then he just fucking yank on it, and I'd see the fucking thing break. He just started swinging. Started going at it, so I fucking turn him, and I start fucking punching at him. My girlfriend's fucking screaming. Brandon Morrow was there, and he's fucking crying. He's, he's like, you guys stop. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon was, what, 11? <laughs> dude, no, dude, he was like 10. No, I'm just kidding, but he was like 14 or 15. <laughs> we were not drinking underage. We were... That never happened. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> <laughs> It was, well, that was like fucking 2005, five six man. But anyways, um, Brian c- fucking comes behind me and fucking started like trying to pull me away and I'm just still fucking punching set. And so he just started, fu- he puts the fucking choke hold and start passing out. I'm just like punching Brian. <laughs> so I can't fucking see him. Someone's got my neck. But you know what? That's love, man. That's, that's, that's how I knew that uh, the next day we were like, hey, hey. You all right? I'm like, yeah. Just hold over. You good? He's like, yep. I'm like, good. All right, we're good. <laughs> and uh, well, that's, that was the only time that I got in a fist fight with Brian. I mean, it wasn't even with him. <laughs> yeah, I'd say both both of the both of the times or the few times I've been in fights with you guys really hasn't been a fight. Like, I just won't leave you alone, and you hit me a couple of times, and then it's just kind of over at that point. <sighs> well, you know, you cornered me, Ryan. <laughs> I, How can you corner somebody in a street? <laughs> I fucking told you I was going to punch you in the fucking head if you didn't back off. Oh, and I, and I told you to go right ahead if that's what you had to do. Yeah. Anyways. And then your hand was fucked up for like but, a year. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about our bar, bar fights. And, uh, the, this is for another another section. Another episode <laughs> like, of this. We'll have a cast. full episode on that. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean... I had fights with you and Brian, and we've been friends. I've been friends with you for 12 years, a little over, and I've been friends with Brian f- since 2005. 15 fucking years. That's some time, years. man. Yeah, 15 years. And, um, like, we're two, like, we're still a band, or we're still together. And every, every time I talk about this, I always say, I am just lucky. Like, yeah, we put on the work and we love music. I'm like, what, you think all these musicians out there forming bands and dismembering and whatever, I like, don't love music? Of course they love music. They all do. But, dude, it's the right combination of fucking people. And you and I click pretty well. Brian and I, because he's got a fucking temper and so do I. I think it's weird that we, we're still click in the band. Click as well as you Sometimes do. Sometimes yeah. it's kind of weird that, that we're still in the band. Dude, dude, I've had some uncomfortable practices in here. When the, the <laughs> tension between you two is your snide remark at each other, and I'm just like, oh, shit, why did he say that? Yeah, dude. And then the other one's like, oh, yeah, well, what about the blah, 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 the shitty this? And I'm like, oh, my God, why are you two saying this to each other? We're like Kirk. <laughs> not Kirk Hammond, but James Hatfield and Lars Ulrich. <laughs> like on that documentary. And he's like, well, just play, you know, normal. <laughs> And it's like, well, I'm not tell you not to play like that because it sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> Let, let's go. Let's go ahead and add on this crazy dynamic. Both you and Brian are absolute fucking assholes. You are. I love you guys, but you're assholes. It's part of your personality. And then the third dynamic to your shit is I'm like so ridiculously nice to a fault. I don't understand how we make it work the way we do, but it works somehow. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh... I, I was just thinking about it, like, wait, why, why are we still friends? <laughs> and like, how, how, how we even fucking survive? And I think, um, he's got a really calm, a very calm demeanor, 
and so do I. Like I'm really quiet and just calm. Like if if I walk into a bar, I'm just like this and order my drink and I just sat there, and I'm just like this. And Brian's like that too. Until, until I know I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Once we start drinking, once you get a couple, in. I don't get I don't get Bryant. <laughs> But <laughs> I don't get Brian, but you know me, man. I started getting like I went from like, yeah, oh, you know, I'm gonna take it easy to like, dude, let's do shots. Shots. <laughs> Fucking, I don't even care about the hangover. As, you always care the next day, but uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things that like, we're pretty calm. Like he's got a calm demeanor. Like yeah, he's an asshole and I'm an asshole, but we're very calm people. Unless fucking you push this. And him and I are very similar on that buttons. aspect. Like yeah, you your fucking, buttons are the same. You start fucking pushing me. Like, yeah, when Brian tells me about his episodes, like, you know, with fucking relationships or fucking or whatever, I work and this and that. I'm like, fuck, man. I'm, the, I'm, I'm just I've been this, there, man. I'm <laughs> about the same. You, you're more like fucking, no, man, fucking, it's not worth it. <laughs> Let's make it work. And you worry too much. But I know Brian a lot better than you in, in, in many ways. That uh yeah I know that no matter what like we I think we have to one of us has to die <laughs> if if the set aside uh, is to fucking fall you know like if if this man was to be over like one of someone's us gonna have to die is gonna have to fucking die because I'm not yeah I, I don't see any any stop in my in my future I think it's because we do a lot of things outside of fucking music like and the cool thing is that we do. I do different things with Brian than I do with you. With you, like, we go shooting. Fucking, you like to go to bars and have a fucking drink. Brian, not so much. Unless but Brian, Brian is like, we'll go. Brian is like, tonight we're taking up, we're getting fucked up. Fucking front butt's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and yeah. I could go and have, like, a like a beer or two right. and, like, maintain and be chill. and Or, right. go or like, hey, you want to go grab some eats and, you know, like. Yeah. Or like the other day when you were like fucking, um, oh, let's go get some food, this and that. Brian was like, what? So I'm not invited? I'm like, well, dude, you usually don't want to do shit. <laughs> right. I forgot this new you, new, new, uh, I don't know. New Brian. New Brian. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, you know, with him, I, I go fishing, go hunting every now and then. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm just fucking, we're, we're fucking lucky, dude. Like our our personalities and our outside activities for music, they all kind of click coincide. And match. Yeah, they all yeah. kind of match. Also, our work, uh, we're all fucking like men. Uh, we, <laughs> like we do we hard work with shit. Brawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you fucking manage a fucking warehouse that is fucking runs twenty four seven. Fucking our construction. Brian, you, you know, he works construction as well, pretty much. We're manual labor guys. Although he, he, he now measures windows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to get to a point where I tell other people to load the trucks and I don't have to do it. Right. You know? Yeah, but um, and then we're all family, man. All three of us have kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, because fucking... Like, we know a lot of people, but I don't think I hang out with, like, not even over half of the fucking friends we have. Mainly just because different lifestyles, man. It's like, hey, man, got this house party. I'm like, oh, man, I got this show, this and that. And fucking after that, we're going to go fucking, like, oh, my God, that sounds like... That what time? Like a lot of work. 10 o'clock? That's my That's bed bedtime. That's bedtime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Yeah, but... I don't know, man. Fucking, it's been working out. I think, um, I think this year is gonna be really good for us. I do too. Recording after our last album, which was like, is that four years? Yeah, like four years ago. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, it's like four years ago. <laughs> it's like the most embarrassing <laughs> fucking thing. We, to dude, even say out loud. We seriously have the longest stretches between our fucking releases of anything. We drag everything out. Decepticide is a slow burn. That's what it is. Oh, dude. It's, it's good, man. It's a good burn. That's why. I don't know if you heard me. Especially I counted over a thousand. <laughs> Stop calling arms guns. Uh, yeah, but um, oh fuck, what I was gonna say. It's like even now, like a lot of our set list is, is 
mostly songs that are not recorded. Yeah. That's why, like, it's really important for us to fucking go record right now. But um, uh, every time we play an old song, it's just like, holy shit, dude. These people have to be tired of fucking hearing this shit. Probably not, because they're still fucking mosh, but... They still throw down and scream along to us. Like, dude, our 10-year anniversary show, pulling all those old songs back out. Right. Dude, it was crazy seeing all the people screaming and yelling with us along and knowing the parts and stuff. It's been a minute, because we play all new stuff, you know? Yeah. As soon, it's almost like as soon as we write a song, we kind of cut one off. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. we, we, uh, we grow on the right side, so we cut a little bit more off on the left side. But it's hard to remember all these songs, man. <laughs> like, Dude, for we, real. Like, we, if, we got like what? if I try to play anything from fucking the first album, I can probably get through the Son of Sustain. But the other songs, man, I I can't even remember anything to Condemned. I know we had a song named I Condemned, can play, I can play but the, I don't remember it. Right, I can play the, the intro. I can play the main fucking riff. And... The intro riff and then the main riff, like dun, 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 dun. I can play that riff, but the rest of the song and all the guitar solos, like I couldn't fucking do that. And even, even not not even going that fuck far back, um, yeah, there's a few songs from the 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 one right. Which one was it right after? Right? Cease cease to exist. Yes, yes. Yeah, the art of deception. I couldn't play. <laughs> I couldn't play you that. To save your life right now. Yeah, not all the way through. I might be able to fucking play it all the way through, but botching a few riffs until, like, I'll find them, you know, as I'm playing it. Right. But, uh, oh, there was a song, uh, Wings, uh, Wings of Dread, dude. That I couldn't fucking play, you, dude. Oh, my God. I, I completely forgot about that dude, song, dude. I fucking hated that song so much, especially after we recorded it. When I listened to the song, I was like, this is the fucking gayest song ever. Ever, man. <laughs> And, and a lot of people that had that album loved that song. Loved that fucking stupid song, dude. Dude, I hated Silent Kill off the first album. <laughs> hated it, dude. Yeah. Hated that song. <laughs> okay, yeah, Silent Kill, it's it was a pretty dumb one. It has not aged of, well. <laughs> of course, of course I wrote it. It was like um I think it's mainly cuz he writes on the fucking A string, so it sounds kind of thin, doesn't sound very heavy. And a lot of the riffs are just on the A string. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. Fucking, yeah, there's a few, yeah, there's a few songs that I, c I couldn't fucking play. Um, top of my head. Like, even, even Asphyxiated and Songs the same. Like, I had to, when, when we played that show, I had to go back and fucking, uh, figure some stuff out. You didn't forget Path to Decay, though, did you? <laughs> no, I can't, I can't play Path yes, to Decay. Yes, you can. <laughs> oh, that's right. We played it, like, not too long ago. Yeah, that's that's a good fucking song. Dude. That's a great song, dude. If you if you had to pick one right now out of all the songs we've written, which one would you say is your favorite? Uh, up to the new ones, yeah, or, or just I, from the old ones. Everything we've written. Every, if you had to pick something right now, what would you say is your favorite? Oh man, I think two things. Recorded wise, one that is recorded. My favorite one has been Retaliation. And it's mainly because it's just it's just pretty well written. I'm pretty proud of the guitar solo in it. Uh, but most of the riffs were written by Adam. Uh, man, it's hard because you know the song of "Disdain." Man, that was like it, it's a, it's like our one of it wasn't our first song; it was our second song. Mm -hmm. But yep. it is to this day. It aged nicely, dude. It did. You, it aged you play, really well. You can still play the song to someone who's never heard us and be like, oh yeah, this is our newest song. The old thing is the shit. Even though that song is over 10 years old. God, that song is so old, bro. <laughs> it's that one has aged beautifully. It's 12 years old and the song is still fucking badass. And out of the whole album, that's the only song. I mean, I mean, who knows, man? Maybe fucking Slaughter with him. But I just haven't heard the song in a long time. Oh, it's been a minute, dude. But uh, that song was also had a, so has some great parts. But the song of the Saint is the best song. And I think, so I'll say like recorded wise, I think it's between the song of the Saint and Retaliation. Right. And from the new stuff, because I, you know, I've been doing all the writing as far as like fucking guitar riffs. I think the one that I'm the most proud is upon the altar, dude. I'm really digging I upon th the altar, dude. I, uh, I, I, I think that's the one that once we were done. It's like 
I was kind of, I'm never happy with the shit I write. You know, I agree with Brian. I just write shitty riffs. <laughs> 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 like, like, I agree. Like, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, I have to make up for your shitty riffs. I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> okay, hey, you know, I agree with you, but fuck you. <laughs> um, but um, with up, up, up on the altar, uh, when we were done with the song and then I fucking, you know, I recorded the last two shows. Especially the 36th show. Like when we played oh, that 36th dude, show yeah. and I fucking watched that video, I don't think I've watched a song as so many, many times, as, as, many that times as that one, like from all the, our live shows. And it's just like, oh, so it's a fast song and it's got those heavy riffs. And I don't know, when it was all fucking done, dude, I was super fucking proud of that song. Uh, that, that guitar riff is probably one of my best fucking guitar riffs. And um, I don't even remember how it came about i know i wrote it at home mm -hmm. when i was at fucking home and then i came here and i just fucking start i start fucking playing it and uh i think i even i think i even planned it actually like i knew what i wanted the drums to sound like and i knew what, what this riff like should sound like like uh, as far as drum drums go and i remember when i came here i played brian i was i think i was playing like some fucking suicide silence or some shit and uh, I, ju I just wanted him to hear, like, drums, like, just on that fucking pace. And then I started jamming that riff. And then that's how he started fucking playing the drums uh, on top of that. Because he could have fucking played the drums completely different uh, on the main riff. But no, but, uh, no, but he came with that super aggressive. Just the, the fucking upbeat and, like, super fucking. angry. Yeah, dude. And, like, the, the way he plays the drums on that reminds me of the drummer from uh, Suicide Silence. Um and I mean, I'm sure a lot of drummers play that, but I just remember them from when they were up here. And fuck, dude, like, I just have it in my memory watching him fucking play. And I was like, fuck, this dude fucking plays hard and super fast. And um, and I know Brian, like, after that show, too, which was, like, years, years ago, he started kind of playing like that, started playing on that fucking, like, upbeat, but, like, super hard. Because he, oh, he's always played on the upbeat, but not that fast and not that fucking hard. And uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, dude, that's a perfect drum beat for that fucking riff. I would have to agree with you. Right, right now, currently, my current favorite song is "Upon the Altar." That's my yeah. fa that's my favorite one right now. Uh, my two runners up, like you said, old school, uh, "Son of Disdain," of course. Right. Like, uh, absolutely adore "Son of Disdain." That's um, that still has the my favorite lyric I've ever written. I've got that I've got that bridge lyric tattooed on my chest. What what is it? Primed for sacrifice, Fight. blinded, blinded eyes, eyes, do see eyes. light. Yeah, dude, I'll I got that. Light. I got that tattooed on my chest. Uh, dude, speaking of your lyrics, man, I think my fucking absolute favorite one, and it's so simple. Guess which one it is? I, um, <laughs> is it is it the fuck you from Lamia? No, or go fuck yourself. I mean, Zach Zach uh, Zach used to used to sing this along because he liked that shit too it's from severed it's hard to talk shit with a broken, broken jaw. jaw dude <laughs> what it's hard to talk shit with a broken jaw dude that is so badass man i remember i remember dude when we were when we were writing that song i remember in my head thinking that i wanted a fight song you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted a, a fucking... I, I know this right. is going to sound funny, but almost like a song that, like, an MMA fighter or, like, a wrestler or, or a UFC fighter or something would, like, entrance to. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my head, I always kind of wanted a fight song. <laughs> Severed is my fight song. You know what I mean? As far right. as the And if you look at the lyrics, that's basically what it's about. It's a, it's about somebody betraying you and then getting laid the fuck out for it. That's basically what those, those lyrics are and then getting buried. It's almost like some mafia shit, you know. You talk, you talk some shit. That you you, shit, you disrespected the wrong motherfucker, and then you got you got handled and buried. Yeah, that's a. It's like a simple lyric, but I think. Uh, I mean, you can hear some generic shit, like "I'll oh, fuck you up" and "fucking piss on your corpse." Right. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. But it's hard to talk shit with a broken jaw. It's like you're like, holy shit, like you broke. His jaw. Go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, yeah, come on. I bet it's hard to talk now. <laughs> now that I broke your fucking jaw. It's like, wow, dude, that's a fucking that's bad lyric. Um, yeah, the song is saying. 
dude that that moment not now not my favorite song but that that bridge moment that even the chorus the though, lyrics, right even the chorus born born in hate the son of the stain doomed from birth doomed from birth Life cast away. Life cast away. Dude, that is that is really fucking good. And then, then of course the. Uh, That's the, what I'm fucking saying, man. The like chorus. You, you need to get back to, to fucking stuff like that. You that, need to get back to like some shit that fucking grabs you, because those lyrics have always been like, wow, dude, like that's some really good fucking writing. That's some really good meaningful writing, you know, like fucking wow. And, and then even do back on some of those older songs like you were so into you used to do fucking backups too yeah i was dude, just th- i was thinking about path to decay uh, dude the chorus to path to decay what dude. was what was what was the lyrics for the chorus uh that goes that you should have known that death would come for you you should know that death would come for you for you you should have seen the end coming okay yeah so yeah that don't fucking um like Lyric wise is not the most complex shit, but the way you lay it out on that riff is like fucking perfect. Like, cause the riff is like, you should have known that death will come for you, for you. You should have seen your end coming. Cool. And then that little that little blank spot where you crushed right. beneath disgrace. Right. I don't know, man. Remember when we recorded with Chris? He said he said that uh, his favorite lyrics were the lyrics in that song. With Chris? Yeah, yeah, dude from a uh, 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 corrupture. He's the one who recorded oh, our yeah, second yeah, album. Oh yeah, 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 Chris. Yeah, he Chris he pointed out that he really liked the lyrics to that song. It was Path to Decay. He liked my vocals. But he said that he liked uh, dirty vocals. Right, so that's like a it's like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah, it's like it sounds shitty, but I like it because I'm into, I like raw shitty vocals. I mean, vocals. I'm into fucking black metal, so yeah, that's. I like, love raw shitty vocals, and so keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you're trying to say, because <laughs> you're in a black metal band. Damn, we're going on 48 minutes, bringing it up. Let's wrap this shit up. Well, All right, man. Well, you know, it was the first episode with uh, ups and downs. I think I should have left it alone because it sounded pretty good when I played it back. And um, I'm going to have a good time fucking uh, editing this shit. Yeah, this first episode was literally the Enzo and Ryan sit down and bullshit over a single beer fucking... Pretty much that's how it's going to be. But uh, I had like a hundred of topics that we could have talked about in case we... Had kind of s- those silent pause moments. So, where... anyways, but uh, no need for that because you and I always have great conversations. That's kind of why I wanted to start this because we have all these talks here, and sometimes I have a, a camera running just because I'm recording like practices and shit for you know music purposes. And uh, some of the fucking shit that's said on this in this room, you know, um, I'm just like, dude, like we are the guys to do a podcast. You know, there's fucking some people out there that wanted to do a podcast or oh, i think they did do a podcast i forgot who has a fucking podcast out there that is like local music but uh i remember you telling me but i no, i don't i don't remember who but oh like you, you said, know who it is you who, said it was only like a it was basically like a radio show on the yeah i think TV. it was it was rob from uh from the press the guy that did, did a press oh yeah 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 article. yeah 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 good yeah. guy i like that guy yeah dude he's i awesome. love that guy he, he's awesome um you know not criticizing his project i'm just saying that when i went to listen to it it just sounded like a radio show because he was playing like music. Like I'm not gonna fucking play somebody's song in, in some in a podcast. I mean, I don't think that's what a podcast is about. But then again, fucking America, you do whatever the fuck you want. America, you want to put fucking music in your podcast? You do that, buddy. But um, from sea to shiny motherfucking sea, <laughs> sounds like somebody needs some freedom. <laughs> See, you sound good when you get close and you talk. Just like this right here. Just like that, buddy. Do you buddy. like it when I talk to you like this? Why don't we so? talk too loud? Just this torque and you and fuck so everything up, right? I'm so sorry. What if I just whispered like this right here? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love you. Oh, my so God. Much. You smell so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fucking creepy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right. Decepti- Deceptipod, first episode, down under our belts. Um, stay tuned. We will be making more of these. So, uh, 
you know, pass this around if you want. If not, who cares? We, we did it for us, not for you, just so you know. <laughs> well, 